Hello, welcome to the channel. Today's goal is to help you improve your grades and save time by using Anki. If you're new to the channel, my name is James and I'm an engineering student studying and I've been using Anki now for four years uh, through my GCSEs, my A-levels and now my degree. And I'm a strong believer in making systems over goals. And My system for studying is first thing in the morning, I review my flashcards and then I make new flashcards using online textbooks or YouTube. And then I do past paper questions. And then I convert the questions I got wrong into flashcards. And then I try and repeat this every day. The timestamps are in the description and I'm gonna explain why to use Anki as a main study tool, how to set up Anki and optimize it, how to make efficient flashcards using Anki, and then how to review for Anki every day and do that efficiently as well. To define Anki is, it is a intelligent flashcard system which organises the spacing of your active recall sessions and is backed up by the scientific evidence of the forgetting curve, um, where after your first active review of a topic, you forget it exponentially over time. But when you use Anki and review the flashcards in intervals, it allows you to retain that information for longer and longer until it goes into your long-term memory. And that's what you want to get the best grades. And there are other apps like Quizlet, but I use Anki because it's quicker and more efficient and applies space repetition and it's free. The best thing about Anki, it makes me feel calm because I know I'm doing all that is in my control by leveraging space repetition and active recall, which are the two main things to help you memorize and do well in exams. So I'm going to go on the computer now and show you how to set up Anki for the first time optimum settings for memorization and the Anki add-ons I use. So in the description there's a link to the Anki download page where you just click the button, download, normal downloading process and then when the application is downloaded and you open it, first thing you'll do is arrange the decks into like um, into your modules and your topics that you're studying for. So this is an example for my chemistry levels. Um, these flashcards are in the description. I do is for new cards a day I have its maximum the learning steps, um, 50 minutes if I get it wrong, one day if I get it right, and then after that next day if I get it right again for that day, um, I'll see it in the next six days. If I get it wrong in that day, I'll go back to 15 minutes, and then it'll re repeat that process over and over again. Until I get it right onto the sixth day, and then it will go for 15 days. I like to have the insertion order as random, so I can to see all the cards random. And with lapses, this is when, after it's graduated, it, um, you get it wrong and for this one I just skip the one day interval in the middle and I just have it just 15 minutes and six days and then it will graduate on to 20 days as a min minimal interval. Then with the advanced settings I would have the maximum interval at um, 80 for the majority of the year during my A levels then when it got close to the exams I put it to 30 days and then um, start at ease I had it 2.48 and then I had a new interval of 0 0.2. And that's all the settings. Um, you can just copy them. You don't have to really understand them. Then in the description, I've pasted all the codes, the add-ons that I use. My video explaining what each of the, one of them does is in there as well. When you paste the, the code in, you just need to restart the application. And when you restart it, um, the add-on will be on your end. So I'm gonna go through one of my lecture notes um, as an example, my mechanics lecture and um, the process of consolidating information into question and answers really helps me understand it better and to get into my long-term memory. So I'm gonna go through it now. Uh, so here I basically use this app called Rectangle to help me put the applications into split screen much easier. It's called Rectangle, Rectangle. And then I use OWL as well. Ooh. OWL, OCR, to help me copy and paste text over really quickly as so. But, so for example here, what I would do is angular motion definitions here, so angular displacement. What is the definition of angular displacement? The change in angular position measured is called angular displacement. So that's the definition that I need to know for my exam. This stuff here is more understanding based. So this is um, going to go into extra. 
and then we put this in extra. So on the keyboard settings in the Mac, I changed it to Command D to be quicker to screenshot um, over and Tanky. What angular displacement really is here. Um, I will go onto YouTube now to try and watch a video onto it. Um, see, there's loads of stuff here. So how to calculate angular displacement, right hand rule. See how here I had to know the right hand rule. Maybe I don't know the right hand rule. So I'm gonna watch this. So say I watch all of this and I find out that I really like this example of explaining the right hand rule, for example. I really like this example. So then I would go share, embed, and start at this point. But then I'll copy all of this, do command C, and then I would go over here, do command shift X, the command V, and then that embeds that YouTube video starting at that point. And this, this really, really helps me. Um, this is probably the biggest step because I really like educating myself from YouTube videos and I find it really good. I use, um, what well, I don't know what I use. I use DF Tube, which is really good to stop any of the um, next suggested videos and stuff. And you can just use it as an education source. Um, that's the process I do normally. So that's a really good flashcard now. So if I post that, I will, when I review it and I go to review it in my flashcards, I can watch that video on it that really describe the understanding of it. And I'm not just memorizing, but I understand what angular position is. And I understand what angular displacement is. And um, that's what's good about using Anki and um, embedding the YouTube function in there as well. So a thing called um, picture superiority effect, which um, there's like evidence that we remember pictures better than we do with words. So, I always try and get a picture in there or a YouTube video in there by screenshotting or embedding it, like just showing you guys. Um, and the best thing about digital flashcards is that it's so quick. You saw it there. I did it probably in like 30 seconds or something, adding that um, YouTube video, adding this here's understanding. But that extra for me is the understanding. The back of the flashcard is the stuff I actually need to know, the essential stuff. The front of it is the question. It's the, it's the distinct question with a distinct answer and a short answer, not a long-winded one like this. But the extra stuff is if I don't understand it and I want to read into it a bit more, I can very easily look down here and see all the sources that I use as a reference point for that information and that knowledge. So that's my process really for making flashcards. Um, then as, as I said in the start of the video, I would then go over like topic questions. So for example here, example there with the solution on the back and here i would then use i would submit it into anki i review it and i review my flashcards the next following day but also say when i sit down to do those flashcards i'll have the browse function open on the bottom right here okay say i want to review that now and i'm going through it and stuff i'd have my bottom side here go through mechanics i'll say angular say i wanted to see if i've got a flashcard on this I define angular acceleration. See here, I've got a flashcard on it. Um, see that I use the owl function and um, I've got a flashcard on that. So it's a rate of change of angular system. This is the flashcard that cor correlates to it. See, it's got the equation that I need to use for that question, that past paper question. So I would, when I was trying to attempt this question on Anki, I would use the browse function as a tool, as like an extension of my memory. So it makes it easier, but um, um, but in reality, if I do my flashcards, I'm going to memorize that anyway. So it's good to remember if I have um, a flashcard related to that topic question. And if I don't, I'll add a question, I'll add a flashcard here um, about that topic question. And then, um, and then, yeah, and then that really helps with understanding as well because it's like the process of going over it. Then here, I'd write, watch a YouTube video about angular acceleration if I. I'll go, I'll go over ang angular acceleration again, and then I would embed a YouTube video there, like I did before. And then this is the reviewing process, this is the start of the reviewing process. Um, whilst I review, I have a timer as well. I normally do it for like an hour or 
if I'm really feeling like tired, I'll do like 20 minutes dash and then have a 10 minute break, 20 minutes dash. And I'll do this until it gets done. Um, with the add-on speed focus, so for example here, I've got, so I've got that wrong. See, um, it will reveal it in nine seconds. And if I press P, it will stop it and I can take more time on it. But normally when I review my flashcards, I want to get them done in about 10 seconds. I want to get, um, I want to review it in about 10 seconds so I can just go over it. And if I didn't get it straight away, if I didn't understand the understanding yeah, of it, it. Um, I would press one and I would say I didn't get that right. But that's how I review it. Um, I do my Anki reviews first in the morning. Uh, and what I like to do is have a piece of paper in front of me and just write down as much as possible and use all my senses when I do it. So I've got um, pictures, I'm using my sight, I'm using words, I'm writing down, um, I'm probably like eating something nice, <laughs> I'm eating at night now. Um, I'm trying to get all my senses so I memorize it very well and uh, using the browse function as I said. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it, you know. And if I don't understand something, I always watch a YouTube video on it or I'll, I'll look it up on Google. And yeah, that's what really helps me. And also, a way to cram for your exams as well is say, you can see here my IQ review and everything. I'm really being raw with you guys. Uh, say I wanted to review all of thermodynamics, right? I would just select all of these now. I'll go to right click it, then I would uh, I'll go to here, then I would forget. But I don't want to do that. I press forget, and basically you have to do them all again. Um, and that's what I did with my A-level flashcards, is that I would forget them all and then have to review them again and again and again. I'll do that probably every day, a week before my final exams, and that's what really helped me. Um, and yeah, this is a bit waffly, but I hope I'm digesting it. I've shown you my process. This is the system, this is the layout I use when I review my flashcards. Um, as you can see, throughout my A-levels, I didn't do it every day, but you can see most days I did it. Most days I did it. Now I've got my exams coming up, so I have to, um, I've got my exams like around here, so I have to start being consistent again. But it's hard, and I'm not saying that I show up every day, I have days off like you see here, I have days off, I had two weekends off there. Um, but it's good to take, take time off, it's good to have a break from it, take a walk, prioritize other stuff than just review the flashcards. But to make Anki work, you have to do it every day for the algorithm to work and for the space repetition and active recall to kick in and to make the most of those two scientific um, memorizing properties. Uh, the reversal to using flashcards is that you could spend a lot of time memorizing something you don't really need to know um, or fail to memorize what's important. So when you make a flashcard, be very precise with the information you think you need to know and make sure you make it on a specification point and not something that's completely irrelevant from your exam because you only have a certain amount of brain capacity to do well for your exam. And I know for myself, I couldn't memorize everything about physics, but I had to do what was important and what was essential within that exam specification. And it's the same with my degree now. I can't memorize everything with thermodynamics, but I have to stick with what's important. Um, and yeah, my goal for this video was to make it easy and help you guys do better in your exams. And I hope um, even if you don't use this way and uh, you find out that this way doesn't work for you. Uh, at least you tried. Um, this is my experience, it's really helped me, and I think it can help you guys. But just try it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't matter. <laughs> try something else, you know? But I'm sharing this because it will help me, and I hope it helps you, and I hope you have a beautiful day. And thank you very much for watching.